Kyrie, what happened there in the second quarter when you guys only scored eight points? <laughs> uh, the playoff game, uh, man, scoring eight points feels like forever. Uh, and that's what it felt like out there. And I think it started with uh, just how we started off the second quarter and uh, allowed them to feel very comfortable in that first quarter. And it was carryover. So I think we got to give them credit for it big shots and doing the right things and capitalizing off our turnovers and also our lack of physicality. Uh, so it was a combination of a lot of those things where we allowed them to feel comfortable on the offensive end and then defensively made it easier just in terms of our spacing. So how do you, how do you, I'm sorry, how do you slow down Zubat going into game two? He had a double-double at, at the halftime today. Uh, yeah, just being mentally prepared, physically prepared to uh, match his energy, um, kind of threw us uh, for a little bit of a a loop when they started off the game uh, with him uh, posting up. So he just got to make adjustments and uh, keep him off the offensive glass and just make it tough for him on those picking rolls. And uh, again, just matches energy. To your left, to your left. Right. Right. Now it's going to lose. Um, obviously, a week between games and even longer for you. Just how much did the long layoff kind of play into the first half um, just offensive world? Yeah, we knew we were going to have to knock off some rust. You know, and, and us as a team, we have guys that have missed uh, you know, three weeks, two weeks. Uh, Timmy not being here for the past few days of preparation. Um, you know, I'm not saying those things as an excuse. It's just internally those things matter for the importance of what we're getting ready for. And, um, you know, after the first half, we came into the locker room as a team and we talked about the things that we felt like we weren't doing and the things that we need to continue doing at a very high level. Uh, but it really centered around the um, – the foundational point I'm talking about physicality and, and this being the playoffs. A lot of guys aren't used to uh, being here. A few young guys aren't used to being here, so they don't know what they can get away with and what the refs are going to call. So I think this was a great uh, first test for us, and uh, we obviously failed. Um, and we came out with a loss, but I think there are some things we can uh, take into game two as strengths that we can continue to uh, push forward and, and utilize and uh, just not overthink it. Again, I talked about this a few weeks back. This, it's a series, not a time to lose confidence. We know our guys, um, you know, some of my teammates are going to shoot better going into game two. Um, and we just want to continue to feed them confidence um, and see where we can control, we can control, and then uh, stop them on the offensive. Tim right. Cato, Tim Cato, the athletic. Uh, I was going to ask about the improved second half. You obviously just covered the, the physicality and, and what you guys did at halftime. How much of it was uh, adjustments and, and just kind of tweaks to some of the things that you guys brought into the first half, and how does that change a series for, you know, game one for some adjustments already to be thrown out there? Wait, ask that one more time, bro. Adjust a lot. Yeah, yeah, so, so, <laughs> so, uh, you simplify the question. Yeah, yeah so how much, guy over here in NBAPR, just don't feel the pressure, man, just ask your question. <laughs> how much was the improved play based off some adjustments you, you guys made? Oh, okay, I appreciate and then, it. And then how much was, you know, how much does that change for the rest of the series? Because we all know series, you know, there's adjustments happening all the time. Yeah, yeah I, I think there was a settling in process, a, a grounding process, and I think that's what I was referring to as the last question, just uh, you know, a few of our young guys, including myself, just settling into our game plan, trusting it. Um, they don't have Kawhi right now, so that was a bit of an adjustment for us when they came out the gates and you know they were playing, uh, obviously James and Paul just playing very free, very loose, uh, knew they were going to get a lot of attempts up tonight. So when you have that as a – when you're going against that uh, type of kind of loose play and um, that confidence that they exude, uh, you got to really just settle into what uh, the overall game plan is and execute that. And I don't think that we came out very flat or without energy. I just think that our mind was all over the place. It's our first playoff game together. Got to settle in. Um, and once we did that in the second half, and I felt like we put some stops together, we got some great offensive possessions, and our confidence and it started to uh, get a little higher. And, and to see that we're starting to look like the Dallas Mavericks we know ourselves to be. So uh, it's the first game of a, of a long series, and I'm excited to see what happens in game two. Uh, hey, Kyrie, this is from uh, media from China, Djibouti. So we want to know that in the summer, would you have any plan for the China trip? Any details on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not focused right on that right now, but yeah, there is a, um, something that I'm thinking about uh, in terms of later in the summer going to China. Tim McMahon has been, you, you mentioned uh, Kawhi, obviously you find out like how in 45 or 40 game he's not playing. Uh, what is that adjustment process like? And, and is there kind of a natural 
psychological uh, letdown. Um, you know, when, when they don't have you know, the face of their franchise. Uh, I don't know if it's a psych. Do you, do you mean to say it's like a let letdown or just a psychological kind of test and yeah. stuff like that? Okay. Right. Yeah, no, it is a psychological game. Uh, playing chess, playing a high level uh, com combative game, competitive game. So when someone like Kawhi, who has a huge presence uh, for their team, does a lot offensively and defensively as they're playing, then there is a bit of a, uh, an adjustment period mentally that you got to get ready because uh, that means that other guys have to step up. And I think we saw that tonight. Guys are making shots, uh, hit threes, uh, even though their percentages don't necessarily reflect uh, them shooting a higher percentage. Uh, you know, so we, we got to tip off our hat for them coming out and hitting us in the mouth in the first two quarters and taking care of home court, playing off the crowd and the excitement, and us being, um, you know, unprepared for the physicality in the first 12 minutes. And then, you know, after that, we settled ourselves and we got, got ourselves in the ball game. And, we saw some positive things that we can carry over, but uh, I think I have to agree with you psychologically. It was definitely a, a different uh, mindset going in once we knew that Kawhi wasn't playing. And uh, again, as a mature pro, you just got to be ready to adjust and adapt. That's what this game is about. Okay, Kyrie, what are some of those positives that you can take away from this game? Uh, going into the second half, I think we really challenged them. Uh, and we all scored in the second half. Uh, we got stops uh, and also you know, some tendencies we saw uh, from guys on, the, on their team uh, that they were really going opposite and uh, really challenging us to guard their different looks. You know, so the first half, I think they had a few plays that, um, you know, we just weren't prepared for, and uh, we got to take that accountability. And then the second half, I feel like once we picked up the physicality and we started demanding that greatness out of ourselves and stopped being afraid of the moment and started settling into what we're in. It's a, it's a war out there, the playoffs, metaphorically speaking, of course. Um, you know, so we got to enjoy it and have fun, but at the same time, uh, you know, bring it to these guys. Uh, going against some Hall of Famers, so they're not going to make it easy. Uh, I don't even know if we're the favorite in the series, so uh, we just got to really pay attention to what we can control. Two more, please. Harry, uh, apologize if you were asked throughout the week of practice, but uh, you're, you're going against guy in Tila who you won a championship with, a um, couple of final experiences with, I guess. Uh, there was two part of it. What, what is that relationship between you guys like? I know when you went to camp together, it's always going to be special. And uh, what do you know about just the way he coaches, the way he adapts, and the way he kind of gets guys on his side? Yeah, I think I would echo your first statement. You know, we're, we're bonded forever. I mean, you know, we did something that can never, you know, thing. I don't know if it can be done again. I mean, we're one, one the only team ever to come back from 3 1, and, and that took a lot of uh, resilience and a lot of one on one uh, communication between myself and him. And, also, we had Brian and we had other good guys that were selflessly sacrificing in their careers and were ready to uh, win the championship and just throw it all on the line. So um, I definitely took some, some positives from what I learned from him and, uh, and now uh, added to who I am as a person and as a competitor now. But uh, me going against him as uh, you know, a player is it's a little bit different uh, because I can see that he's giving them little cues, and I'm just trying to catch every every little detail so I can carry it on to game two and uh, make some adjustments my, myself. So uh, he's grown as a leader. I've grown as a leader. So it's not the same T. Lou, uh, and I'm not the same Kai, but uh, it's just fun now that we can do it as mature chess players. Kind of along those same lines almost, uh, you and James. I remember when James got to Brooklyn, and he was like, you beat him one. And I'll, and I'll be the two. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that might help him. Definitely, you know, you see what you and Luka have together. How does that kind of help you go through this final series when you guys, for the first time since y'all were teammates, are going up against each other in the final series, you and James? Yeah, uh, well, to answer your first part, I think the true testament of greatness is being able to adapt with other great players and not lose your identity and you know, not fall into uh, the victimization of external distractions and you know people telling you what you should be and how you should play. Um, I think me and James didn't get enough reps, so <laughs> you know we played a few games together, but we didn't get enough reps. But when you're playing against some, playing with somebody that's special, it makes the game easier. But playing against them, uh, you know, you can tell that he, when he comes out with an aggressive mindset, it's a different team, and uh, you know we just got to be ready for uh, his ISO basketball, and his one-on-one -on -one capabilities. And, his ability to make his teammates better. So uh, it's good to be on the other side. Um, definitely missing, but at the same time, glad that we get to compete against each other now. Thank you.